Boom. <laughs> hey, I remembered. How's everyone doing? Um, it today was um, today was kind of a boring day in court, right? Um, nothing interesting happened. Oh, wait a minute. No, that is not the case. I mean, the evidence was a little bit boring. We're going to go through the evidence, but there was also some excitement. Um, there was. I had to go and rush um, the pigeon business. Um, I see people saying they got kicked to Rob's Friday night stream. What? Um, you should still be here. Um, so um, it, it will kick you to the Friday night stream afterwards, I hope. But um, I had to go and rush a pigeon business uh, bumper, the little videos I play, because... Um, there was some pigeon business today, and I also had to make a second bumper for extreme pigeon business because um, we are at like pigeon DEFCON, you know, DEFCON, like whatever. So, um, hi, everyone. <laughs> hi. Um, I see. Uh, why are people saying they got kicked to Rob? That is... Okay, um, that is weird. I don't know what's going on. All right, so let's talk about what happened today. Um, today, oh, and we got a question here. What does I mean by pigeon business? Uh, pigeon business refers to silliness. Um, it originally comes from a video I was doing on a lawyer, Janet Braun. And Janet Braun, um, I was saying that it's difficult to tell whether what she's doing is tactics or if she was just engaging in pigeon business, as in referring to how a pigeon will be, um, you know, will walk around a chessboard, kick over pieces, crap everywhere, and doesn't necessarily have a strategy. So we have some pigeon business, which is just sort of ridiculous silliness. Um, Tammy, I was, I moved it up just so that I could um, hopefully get hopefully have a little bit more time before Rob starts. So, all right. Now, I got a, a can of Coke. I've got some scotch. We are ready to roll. Ready to roll. So, let's talk about our first witness. The first witness comes back, and I have some notes, but my timestamps are probably all messed up. So let us try to make sure we've got our time stamp or we try to sort of cover all of this here because um, things are a bit um, bit wild. All right. I'm just trying to see if I can find the right moment here. Um, oh, my timestamps are all wrong. OK, I think this is the right moment. And I need to actually show you guys the video. Uh, there we go. Have I tried the new spiced Coke? No, I have not. Why is it doing the loady thing? Do the playing thing. We want to see the playing thing. Yes. What is this? This was a box Can you guys hear the audio? Recovered from PDQ Can you guys hear the audio? Uh, now, just as a reminder, this is our sort of forensic crime scene person. Um, she has been testifying about sort of firearms and so forth. And she did a lot of like on scene investigation. Uh, I'm also told that I need to Bing because I ticked over. Um, so, but I don't actually have Bing software, but I did tick over 255. So, yeah. A box of ammunition? Yes. Was it live or dummy or blank? Only live ammunition was collected from PDQ props. Okay. So, this is from PDQ. Um, um, guys, for background, PDQ is Seth Kenny's establishment. Now, one of the things that is going to be an issue, uh, defense, Hannah's side, wants to say, listen, the ammo, the live ammo, came from Seth Kenny. They're trying to blame Seth Kenny and PDQ. And I'm going to say PDQ looks like an absolute disaster. Um, it looks like a bit of a tire fire. So um, we're going to talk about that too, but uh, defense or the prosecution here has some good points to say maybe it's not PDQ. Let's uh, let's watch that here. 
when you were there, <clears throat> were, were, were there other types of ammunition there also? Yes. I can't okay. up the volume anymore, I don't um, think. States Exhibit 7. I don't have a way to make what it louder. This is the live ammunition that was recovered from PDQ props. And Did that this make it louder? live ammunition that was recovered from PDQ props, uh, is it visibly different than the live rounds that were found on the movie set? Yes. And how is it visibly different? So there were different types of live ammunition collected from PDQ, um, including different stamps on that am ammunition. And let me ask you this, the, the projectile shape, uh, is the projectile shape um, different in these than, than in the rounds that were found on, on set? Yes. States Exhibit 72. Okay, so this is going, this is like such a, they ask this question kind of like, eh, whatever, and then they, they move past it. Um, and yes, she does say later that she only took 45s from PDQ, uh, but the, the projectile being different is a bit of a big deal. And it's just this minor, minor way she asks it and then moves on. It's like um, PDQ appears to have had their projectiles as um, what, what you'd call semi-wad cutter. So semi wad cutter is um, it's a different shape. Uh, I'll try to explain like projectile shapes. Um, projectile, like the actual bullet part, the part that flies out and impacts whatever you're shooting can have a variety of different shapes. They can have a round nose. They can have a pointed nose. They can have a flat nose. Um, and one of the things about... Um, you know, wad cutter, what it's for is to cut a neat um, a neat circle out of paper. It's for shooting at paper. Uh, so the reason why you use semi, like wad cutter or semi wad cutter is to successful, you want to leave very clean holes for target shooting. That's what that's for. So semi wad cutter, like wad cutter has kind of a very flat project, like flat front. Whereas semi wad cutter uh, is actually sort of it, it has a flat chunk. We can go back to it here, and I can just show you a little bit. So, so you see these semi wad cutter rounds. That's what this is here, where you can see my mouse moving. Hopefully, um, has this flat rim around the edge, and then this pointed bit at the start. And so it's designed to try to get some of the best of the wad cutter round where it leaves like nice clean circles or uh, as well as some of the best of like in a more aerodynamic shape. Um, recaps are not going to be four hours every night. The first recap was probably going to be longer than the others. Uh, I'm going to try to keep it a little shorter today because I want to I want to jump on Friday Night Frenzy like I imagine a bunch of you guys do. So a wad cutter is a flat shape. Like it's it's very much kind of like shooting a soup can at something, like that kind of shape. Semi wad cutter tries to get that aerodynamic aspect to it to be more accurate. Because I mean these are for um these are for target shooting. Also, I have to join Friday Night Frenzy because we have a phrase that we need Rob to say. And I know Rob is not really watching right now. Uh, I hope he's not listening right now. Otherwise, he might uh, hear the plan. But um, what is it? Um, Rob is currently doing timestamps for Friday Night Frenzy. He might be on a little later. So, um, yeah. Uh, and yes, GGPP. We're going to talk about that because it is it's some exciting stuff. So that is our first kind of moment there that's our first sort of thing to discuss is this this i think is a bigger deal than most people really spotted is that seth kenny seems to be using the semi wad cutter rounds whereas yeah all right let's jump to cross-examination 
Um, so they're going to bring on um, Bowles. He's going to get up for Cross. Um, they also had some really interesting um, kind of non-objections. We can watch one of those. I'm not quite sure what the way the way you're. Um... I think I just missed it. I'm just looking at it. Does that? Okay, that's an objection. I'm, I'm not quite sure what the way the way you're. Um, she's phrasing. It, yes, it just. I guess. It's okay. It, sometimes it sounds leading to me, but it's okay. Um, so he objected and then he backed away from the objection so that we see uh, uh, there was some of that and there was some of just him having a discussion with the prosecutor rather than objecting he would just be like can you rephrase that and the prosecutor did um, I just want to note these the prosecution and the defense on this one appear to be being what you want them to be right you want them you want the prosecution and the defense to be collegial with each other you want them to be friendly and polite there is no reason you have to hate each other there's no reason you've got to be dicks to each other and so i really like seeing that they're getting along and that they're being friendly and you know whatever else right i really like seeing that um i don't I didn't like some of the other trials, uh, at least the behavior of counsel, where you see them being shitty at each other. Even the Depp trial. I mean, I like the lawyers. Well, I like the lawyers on one side. Um, no, I like, there's a bunch of them I like. I, I give Rottenborn a bit of credit. Uh, Elaine, no credit. Rottenborn, I give some credit. Um, but I like, you know, I like Ben Chu. I like Camille Vasquez. But they were... <clears throat> They were getting a little snipey at each other. Um, they weren't the worst circumstances, though. Like, if you saw uh, Binger and Kraus, they were getting real mean. There was some moments of meanness from uh, Greg Owens in the uh, Paltrow trial. I don't like that. I, I just want people to um, be proper and so forth. So, um, yeah, Murdoch lawyers hated each other. Um, yeah. All right. So, um, what is it? Someone once told me wad cutters were to do more damage. That's not the case. If you want to do more damage, uh, let me show you uh, a projectile that is designed to do damage. Um, I got one of those. I got it from Shot Show. I think it's just right behind me. I'm gonna go get it. Don't, don't break anything, chat. Don't, don't get up. Um, it looks like you guys have been good. Um, hollow points do more damage because they will mushroom out. Um, I believe my room is a bit of a mess right now. So let me show you a hollow point. Uh, I'm going to embiggen myself just to do some show and tell. Uh, I'm going to show you a hollow point. This is a hollow point that, or this is one, uh, sorry, this is not a hollow point. This is something that impacted um, body armor. But it'll show you a little bit of what, you know, a hollow point might do um, in a certain way. So a hollow point is designed to expand, um, and it's designed to um, it's designed to sort of leave a wider wound track. Uh, this is sorry, I said this was a hollow point. It's not a hollow point. This was a round nose that uh, impacted body armor. But you can see how the bit the back of this, you can see the original nine mil size. And then you can see how how much larger it is, you know, it's expanded to. A hollow point will do the same thing and leave a larger wound track. Um, and that is to, that's to cause more damage. Wad cutters don't really expand. They're, they're just there to do precision shots on paper. The other thing um, is we can start looking at some rounds that are really designed to cause some additional damage. This is a 12-gauge slug, expanded. 
Now, 12 gauge slug is a good size projectile in and of itself, but you see how this thing is expanded into those, you know, into a much, um, this is a 12 gauge dummy. It, it even prints dummy on it. And you can see how, you know, the size difference, um, this will cause a lot of damage. And I can tell you, um, if you got hit by this, your odds of survival are not great. Um, I got this at SHOT Show. Um, I, I might buy some of these just because um, if I ever need to use a 12 gauge against a bear, I would, yeah. Somebody says, "Can you? are you sure that this is a dummy? Yes, they made this with transparent plastic and you can see that instead of containing powder, it it's just got plastic in there. Um, that's a dummy for, uh, I use those to practice shotgun operation. Um, so somebody says that used in animal hunting. That is really intended for like bears. Um, it's really a, like a bear defense round. So um, that's, that's what that's for. Okay, let's move along here. Um, somebody says, what's the slug called? I can't remember. I have their business card here somewhere, but it's in a stack of business cards that I got. So I'm trying to figure it out. Um, it's not Silencer Central. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out which of uh, these companies it was because I actually want to buy some. Um, yeah, it, uh, it's not Terran Tactical. I know who they are. Um, yeah, I'll have to find it another time. Um, oh, I found it right now. Um, let me show you. They're getting some free advertising today because um, they are not, they're not a sponsor, um, but that is uh, Duplex, Innovative Ammunition. So, um, yeah, uh, maybe I shouldn't have put up his car. Sorry. <laughs> I hope nobody can read that. Um, I mean, it's his business card, so I don't know if he matters or if he minds all that much. But, uh, yeah, Duplex. Um, and they sell a bunch of different stuff there. So, um, today was a, uh, yeah, and this is, uh, folks, a 12-gauge slug will go through your car door, you, your passenger, and out the passenger door. Yep, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I had to shoot slugs out of my shotgun. We went to an indoor range once, and I left feeling like I'd been in an accident. Absolutely. Um, yep. So, all right. Let us uh, move on. There was another moment I wanted to capture here. Um, and that is he on cross. So we got him getting up. And he starts off on his cross with some stuff that I thought was, was BS. I see Hannah was, is innocent and she has a gorilla grip on my heart. Um, Hannah is not innocent, but she might have a gorilla grip on your heart. Um, that is kind of creepy, though. <laughs> so. Uh, 12 gauge means that one pound of lead makes 12 bullets. Not exactly. It's that one pound of lead makes 12 spherical thing, like spherical pellets that size, um, if I recall correctly. Um, the gauge stuff, like the historical reason for it, doesn't come up all that often, so I only look it up every time it comes up. So I know the Gorilla Grip is a reference to the trial. I know that. That's also a reference to something else. Um, we can talk about that. Uh, I'm gonna, drinking some scotch. I'm gonna approach and see if so, you recognize this photo that we've just been talking about. I can introduce you very much. Sure. Wow. Did you see that little that little exchange? He's got the photo. He says, "I'm not going to introduce it. I'm just going to show her." And the prosecutor says, "Sure." Just polite courtroom operation, right? Um, so, Camp Atterbury. I don't know where that is. Oh, I forgot to de-biggin myself. Take a look at that. I'm showing you guys an interaction, and then I forgot to actually show the interaction. So, if you recognize 
this photo that we just been talking about, Anthony can do with the very last one. Sure. Yeah, so we just, and you know, that little interaction, right? If you could take a look at that. That, again, they're really, they're doing, and I mean, we may see this breakdown. It's a really contentious trial, but I like how polite they're being. I like how, you know, all of that. So, all right, let's. Um, do not okay and and so you didn't take that photo no okay what is in that i know we're not going to move to introduce it but what is in this picture uh it appeared Hang on, I'm going to object. she's never seen the picture before uh she didn't take the picture i don't think she can answer that question without it being completely speculative and i'm just asking her to identify it uh, what what is it not to go into detail but what is it just for the record it's a picture. Right. I'm just She's, asking. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Bowles. Since since you're across, can't you just lead her in that question? And I, I can. We don't get sure. Out I just piece. wanted her to say it. Yeah, that's fine. This now this is just you know she's saying like you're cross, right? You're cross examining. Just just tell like tell the witness what it is. You're allowed to lead a witness on cross, so like just tell them what what the uh, the issue is i see people saying volume up i'm trying to volume it up it's just so um i don't know if i can volume it up properly but this is a picture with rounds in it in a box yes okay. can you guys hear it a little better and if i could have that back thank you okay ma'am so in terms of recognizing uh, live versus dummy rounds, you would also agree with me that you have not been trained on the shininess of rounds and how that you can't tell a, a dummy or live from their shininess, right? So I'm told I am way too loud compared to the court. I'm going to try to turn myself down and then you guys can turn me up. So, um, talk about patine. Can you guys, is this uh, a little better? On some of the rounds, do you remember that? And, and actually what that is, is just oxidation. I'm getting a thumbs up, case, good. Correct? Yes. So in other words, when a round sits around for long enough, oxygen interacts with the metal and it's just gonna turn a little color, correct? Yes. And because oxygen does that to the outside of the round, you don't know whether that may, it, it, doesn't matter whether it, I've turned myself down a, a little more. It's live or a dummy, correct? Correct. Tell me if, I, if this is better. Cases. Yes. Okay. Um, now, with regard to the FBI, there were several things that were sent to the FBI. It's still too yesterday. loud. Okay. Um, still too loud. How far down do I have to take this? Okay. I've got it a little further down. Um, we're going to go back here. Hopefully, it's going to. Hopefully it's going to clear things up a little. Okay, I'm going to, I am going to approach and see if you recognize this photo that we've just been talking about. Anthony can do Closed that. captions, unavailable, yeah. folks. I'm. Uh, and this is the fence eye. If you could take a look at that. Do you, uh, ma'am, do you recognize that photo? I do not. Okay. And, and so you didn't take that. Photo. Is this better no. now with a okay. mix? What is in that? I know we're not going to move to introduce it, but what is in this picture? Uh, it appeared. I don't have a booster. I don't know how to fix this. <laughs> um, I don't know how to fix all of this here. Uh, that is annoying. I see people saying it's better. And I'm just asking her to identify it. Uh, what what is it? Not to go into detail. Hopefully, it's a little better. I, the then I see you in the chat, That's Emily. Right. I'm just asking. Her. I'm sorry, Mr. Bowles. Since since you're cross, can't you just lead her in that question? I, I can. We don't get sure. I just case. wanted her to see. It. Yeah, that's fine. This is a picture with rounds in it in a box. Yes. I'm okay. trying to get a volume booster going right now. For. Uh, 
hopefully we'll get it going. Okay, ma'am. So in terms of recognizing uh, live versus dummy rounds, you would also agree with me that you have not been trained on the shininess of rounds. So guys, can you hear that? Are you able to hear it? Um, I see people saying I'm still loud. Uh, I'm seeing people saying I'm still, the court audio goes down as I decrease more. That Okay, that might be a problem. Um, all right, then let me fix that. I'll move that back up then. Uh, I'm downloading an add-on here. Um, I'm going to try to find one <laughs> in a hurry. Uh, volume booster. There we go. Okay. It was installed. There we go. Let's try this. Um, we're going to minimize this. Hopefully we will. And then we're going to have to probably refresh this to make this work. Sorry, folks. Uh, I, I'm only sort of semi a professional at this. Um, I'm going to pull that down. I'm going to embiggen me while I mess with things here. Um, is this the volume? No, that is not volume booster. Where is the volume booster I just installed? I just installed you. Where are you? Uh, volume booster open. All right. We got this at 155 now. Let's. Um... Are you guys better able to hear this? Of course, okay, I installed so... malware. In terms of recognizing uh, live versus dummy rounds. Is this better? You would also agree with me that you have not been trained on the shininess. I'm told, like, go go big or go home. All right, volume booster. We're going to go up to 258. There we go. Um, and we're going to go back just so that you guys can. Okay, man. We're going to try a little. <laughs> okay, ma'am. So <laughs> sorry about the. Uh... Uh, live versus dummy rounds. You would also agree with me that you have not been trained on the shininess of rounds and how that. You can't tell a, a dummy or live from their shininess, right? Correct. Okay. And so you can't tell based um, on shininess. There was okay. Some talk about patine uh, or a patina on some of the rounds. Do you remember that? Yes. I also just love how he's just as annoyed by the patine versus patina thing as as I was because I was starting to shout, be like, mm, "It's patina. It's not patine." You can use patine as a verb. Uh, to patine something is to put on a real or a false patina, but the actual, like the actual pattern on a surface, is a patina. And so I don't know why she keeps saying patine. And I really liked when he's like, "or a patina." I was like, "Yes, thank you." Um, yeah. And, and actually, what that is, is just oxidation on the round case, correct? Yes. So, in other words, when a round sits around for a long enough, oxygen interacts with the metal and it's just going to turn a little color, correct? Yes. And because oxygen does that to the outside of a round, you don't know whether that may, it, it doesn't matter whether it, the, there's a patina as to whether it's live or a dummy, correct? Correct. Because they have the same. So he's cases. going somewhere with this. Yes. We're going to okay. talk about it once he gets there. Um, now, with regard to the FBI, there were several things that were sent to the FBI. You testified I yesterday. Think something is for testing the correct? sound. Yes. And there was DNA testing uh, requested on the revolver that was used by Mr. Baldwin, correct? Yes. And you knew that that was submitted. Yes. Now, yesterday you talked about. Somebody told you at the FBI that the live rounds could not be tested for DNA. You remember that? Yes. Who did you talk to specifically? I don't recall who I specifically spoke to at the lab. Okay. Did you make that call? 
to not send them. No, did you make the call to the FBI personally? Yes, I did, okay. along with uh, their it Looks like the echo cancellation was causing some problems. Area, who was uh, Agent Cortez. Cortez, uh, okay. Now, were you aware that, that we had requested those rounds, fingerprints and DNA be taken from them? So he's got an argument here, and the argument is, listen, you had to send these dummies off to the FBI lab in order to tell the dummies from real cartridges. And the problem is, is that this is absolutely a confession that, and now I'm quiet, I'm being told. <laughs> this is absolutely a confession that somebody whose job it was to manage the the dummies was incompetent at their job in a fashion that is exceptionally dangerous like this this is a this is a confession on on behalf of his client and yet it's being spun as a defense because if there are dummy rounds that are on set that can't be identified one from the other um, those dummies should not be being used. Those dummies should not be on set. They shouldn't be operated. And if you take the gun and you take a cartridge, and if you are unable to tell the difference between that and a live cartridge, you do not put it in the gun. And so his defense is there were dummies on this set that you can't tell from a live cartridge. The answer is that dummy doesn't go in a gun because you can't tell if it's live or not live. Um, I've got here a film dummy. Like this is a real film dummy from Movie Armaments Group. You can hear it go shake a shake a shake a shake a, right? Um, I can tell this from a real cartridge. I have a, I have a, like a literal bucket of 45 long colt in the other room. I could take these 10 dummy rounds and literally just, you know, just up and like grab a handful, yeet them straight into the bucket and then shake the bucket. And I could pull those 10 rounds out again. I could go through that and find these 10 rounds again. Now, I just want to note, I think his defense is doing an excellent job here. Like, I'm not faulting defense counsel because defense counsel is managing to spin this and is doing so effectively, I think. They're muddying the waters. And sometimes, um, sometimes the... Uh, sometimes the job of a defense counsel is to muddy the waters because it's the job of the prosecution to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the person did it. And so if they can't like deal with the muddied waters, defense counsel will win. That is excellent. That is exactly what you want. And so um, that's what we're looking at. Um, let's see. Um, I, uh, yeah, that, um, you know, this is a real big problem on all of this. And, um, this is a real concern. So, um, that is, you know, the prosecution is going to need to bring in, uh, they're going to need to bring in an expert who can properly counter that right they can properly counter this detail in order to establish a conviction because the defense is being really good at poking holes here that aren't really holes this is really a confession me knowing what i know i would you know i would say like this is something to con you know this is a confession here this is he's throwing his client under the bus but the jury doesn't know what i know the jury doesn't have that and so they need to get that information out defense is doing a fantastic job but 
from my perspective as a person who is, um, you know, with some knowledge here, I'm like, this is shocking to me. But I only get there based on having these discussions. The other thing I will note, I when I heard the the whole replicas thing, right, this idea that they had rounds on set that were exactly like that look exactly like real cartridges. And they say you can hear the powder when you shake a live cartridge. You can sometimes hear powder when you shake a live cartridge. If you have good ears and if it's not sufficiently packed full of powder that the powder is loose, then then you can hear powder. But if the powder is packed in there, you won't hear a damn thing. So I would never rely on hearing powder. If I found something that had no indicia of... Um, if I had something that had no indicators, no punched primer, no drilled hole, no BB, I would be... Like, what the hell? And I would be stopping things to pull that out and make sure, it would, like, find out what the heck is going on with it. So, yeah, this this was extremely concerning. It was concerning enough that I was like, I need to make sure that I am not an idiot. Because there's a possibility that I was just an idiot, right? That I was just like, I think this is a big deal, and so I need to um, I need to go and check with uh, you know maybe uh, maybe an expert will say it's not a big deal. So I called a film armor. That's I was catching up on things because I called a film armor, and um, so what did I you know what did I um, uh, see there, I, I I explained the issue to the film armor, and the film armor said, why the hell would you have a replica round? Like, why would you do that? This makes no sense. And that was very reassuring to me to hear that I was not, like, crazy on this one. Uh, I'm also going to say I um, I also got some interesting history on this. Um, so the guy who initially invented this, um, who invented the sort of idea of putting a BB into these blanks, was a guy named Joe Swanson. And so these are often, or sorry, into the dummies. Got to keep my terminology straight there. A uh, guy named Joe Swanson. Joe Swanson, and these were called. Swanson dummies for a while. That allowed you to have a primer in there that looks like, you know, looks exactly like a, a live cartridge, but because it's got that BB, you can still tell. This was a major sort of innovation. And so anything you would need to have like an extreme close up where you've got somebody, like, let's say you're, you know, um, let's say you're close up is and carolyn i'm gonna star that comment i'm gonna come back to it because um so uh let's say you you know let's say we're doing an extreme close-up and you know it's showing me loading the cartridge like from right here loading the cartridge into the gun you need this to not look obviously like a dummy right you need it to look like a real one that's why they have the you know, the BB in it so that you can, um, you can track it. No, it's not from family guy. It's, I mean, maybe the, I think family guy was just, they picked a, you know, pick that out. So yeah. Now some other things that they use dummies with, um, I was opening the little bag of dummies. Uh, some of the other things they use dummies with, um, they used to use dummies, uh, in magazines as the last round. And the reason why they use it as the last round is to defeat uh, what's called the hold open. The hold open on a mag is when you fire the last round on a magazine, it blows it back, and then, you know, it, it holds the gun open so that you can see inside. Um, they don't want that for certain kinds of 
films, especially, you know, when you've got like the bottomless magazine where the guy is shooting his like his uh, nine mil handgun and he pulls the trigger like 50 times and he doesn't, you know, he never runs out of ammo. Um, that sort of thing, you they put they'd load it with blanks, which do make a bang and do cycle the action. And then the last one, or you'd actually load it first, but it would be the last one to be fired, would be a dummy round. So it would defeat that hold open. Um, then later, they they started doing, instead, they'd modify the magazine to just remove that bit that, uh, that catches for the hold open. And those they ended up calling Woo Mags. So, um, you know, and if you're wondering why Woo Mags, John Woo movies. That's that's what that's about. So um, that's just sort of a little bit of history here. But these are revolvers. So the reason now, one thing I got people um, people were asking about was why would you load dummies at all into these? And so I need to I'm going to pull this down. I'm going to show you a video I made. Uh, to show why you would, like, A, some things about dummies, but B, why you would actually load dummies into um, into that. Now, I had to pre-record this because YouTube does not allow me to handle a firearm on on a live. Um, so, we're, I pre-recorded this. YouTube censor who watches this later. This is a pre-recorded video that I'm putting up on the screen now. And if you take this video down because of this, you are bad at your job. So, yeah. This exact is the exact same make and model, make and model revolver, revolver, revolver that Alec Baldwin, Alec Baldwin was using, was using on the set, on the set, of, set of, Rust. of Rust. Now, you see how I even put like a video template thing over it? Um, I'm just going to show you the video so you don't even have to see me. Uh, I put the video template over it just to make sure it's really clear. So one, so thing, one you'll thing you'll note here, note here is, that is that there's echo on the pre-record. Okay, I can, f um, I can fix that. Give me one second. I will fix that. I am having all sorts of problems here. Um, this should fix the echo on the pre-record. Go. There is no swing out cylinder. If you're used to seeing revolvers where this piece kind of slides out to allow you to reload it, that's not how this one works. It doesn't move except to rotate. So how do we load and unload this thing? First... This is an unloaded gun to start. I've confirmed it, but we're going to recheck that. So I'm going to move this over into the half cock position, which allows the cylinder to spin freely. And then I'm going to open the loading gate. Now we're also going to keep this pointed in safe directions at all times. And you can see here, so we're just going to do a visual confirmation that this is unloaded. I'm actually watching it in the camera here. So. Once we've got that done, we know we're dealing with an unloaded firearm. I'm going to show you what this looks like pointed like front on, because a lot of people have said, why do they bother with dummies at all? And that's an important question. So when you see it sort of pointed towards the camera, and I'm not pointing it directly at the camera, but you can see into the cylinder here, you can see that it's unloaded. And so now I'm going to load this thing and I can show you what it looks like loaded and show you also how we load it safely with film dummies. These are real film dummies. These are from Movie Armaments Group. Um, these are, I think, from the same batch that uh, other things from this batch ended up being used in films. So we open our loading gate, and now I'm visually confirming each one. There's no primer pocket, and I can also confirm by sound because there's a ball bearing in this. Hopefully you guys can hear that. And once I've confirmed we can hear that, it. only when I'm sure that that's safe does it go into the firearm. And now I can, I'm can i loading one, and then I'm going to skip one. And that's going to end up with me having five cartridges in the gun, but it's also going to end up with the hammer resting on an empty chamber. And that was commonly done because the older versions of this gun were not necessarily like drop safe. And so they could go off if they were bumped or so forth. The modern versions don't do that. The modern versions are much safer. But I'm showing you because that's really what they would have done at the time. So, and it's also been mentioned in the Rust trial. So 
I'm doing that here. So once again, visual confirmation, audio confirmation. I have confirmed that this is a dummy and I'm certain that it is. Only once that is the case does it go in and then I advance. Visually confirm, listen for the dummy, load. Visually confirm, listen for the dummy, once I'm certain, load. Last one that we're going to load here, visually confirm, listen, I'm certain that this is a dummy, load. Another precaution I'm taking here is that there is no live ammunition anywhere near me. In order to get live ammunition for this gun or any other gun, I'd have to leave the room that I'm in, go into another room, open a locked container, and retrieve it. Now, on a film set, we would want to be even more... Um, even more careful. We'd want to make sure that there was no live ammunition anywhere on set, that it would just be impossible. Somebody would have to leave this, you know, leave the area. So once that's done, I can sort of move it over. I'm going to lower the hammer and I'm going to sort of obstruct here. I'm being a little more careful than I have to, but there we go. So now it is resting on, the hammer is resting on an empty, uh, empty chamber here and this is sort of how it would be loaded. Now, I was saying that I was going to show you what it looks like. So now that you can see, you can actually you can see, see the difference, the right? front of each of these dummies. And so if you've got a villain and you're doing like the close up pointing the gun scene or something like that, somebody who is aware of this, which, you know, lots of people are familiar with firearms who watch movies would be able to go, wait a minute why is the villain pointing an unloaded gun? And then, you know, it just, it really looks wrong. So this is done to make sure that we've got accuracy because films put a lot of work into trying to be accurate. Sometimes they don't get it right, but they do put a lot of work into it. So that's what dummies are for. You know, here you can see quite clearly now, this is, looks very different than it did when it was unloaded. So now I'm going to show you how we unload this thing because you know, you don't want to leave the dummies in there on a film. You'd want to unload it every time, you know, it wasn't being used. So once again, I'm going to uh, put this into that half cock position. And if you tilt it, sometimes it can just fall out like that one did. Uh, but sometimes they're a little stickier. And so what you may end up needing to do is use this piece here. And this is a little, uh, it slides and it pushes a rod that then pushes our cartridge out. So if it's stuck in there for various reasons, um, you can guide it out. Usually a fired cartridge or the brass that it, after it's been fired is a little more reluctant to, to push out than these are. So once again, remove. And I'm setting these dummies aside because I don't want to lose them, right? I, these are useful to me. So remove all right now i'm certain now based on counting that this is unloaded but i'm still going to recheck by spinning the cylinder here all right now i have confirmed that this is entirely unloaded so i'm going to lower my hammer close up the loading gate and that's it we're done with this so that's sort of the loading and unloading process of this particular item, uh, this particular firearm. And a lot of people were asking, why use dummies at all? Um, I hope that this provides a bit of explanation. So if you have any other questions, drop them in the chat. I might make another of these videos, or I might just be able to explain them live. Thanks, guys. All right, so we... Uh, Pulled that down because, yeah, so that sort of tells us why they use dummies. It explains, you know, all of this. And I just want to note, like, did you see how long it took me to check that? Did you see how long it took me to unload and reload it? If you didn't know what was in that, that gun, you can unload it and reload it, you know, and check each round in under a minute. It's not onerous. It's not... um it's not a difficult thing to do. 
It's just that they didn't want to do it. So, all right, let's move on. I said I was going to be fast, and now I'm not fast at all. I've I've been slow. Um, we're going to pull up some stuff here. Um, cause there are some, there's some video clips or there's some clips here that you guys got to see. Um, oh, and I got to get you the audio back cause, um, all of this is a headache. Scope of expertise and we've got plenty of other witnesses who can answer Sure, yeah, we, we do. Okay. Okay. We do. okay. Did you see this objection there? It was like, this is outside of her expertise. Um, and we got other witnesses. And he's like, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll ask the other witnesses. So, yeah. Uh, if you can move to the next picture, Mr. Bullion. Hopefully you guys can hear this again. And then again, what are, just, uh, if you can give the jury just an idea of what, what these are, is that more ammo? Yes. Okay. And again, that's in a, and that one in particular was just in a gray, Tub? Yes. Okay. And the next one. What and what are some of these pictures? This is Seth Kenny's house. Um and I mean my garage is a bigger mess than this. My office um is a mess. But you can't have a mess when you're doing armoring. Like this is it shouldn't look like this. Um, is that like a battery that he's got lying there? Like, I don't know what that is. That's like holding up the sheet. Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, this was the front room area. Okay. Ammo just kind of, is that more ammo boxes in this, this particular picture? Yes. Okay. Why is he showing us this? It's so that it looks like. Um, so that we can see that Seth Kenny's okay, license. Again, is that a JS notation? Yes. Okay. And yeah, you can move forward, please, Mr. Bullion. Okay, when you go back uh, one, is that a gun gun belt? Yes. Okay. And go forward. And again, more ammo? Yes. Okay. And we've seen enough of those. If, uh, unless you have anything in particular, but that's... Uh, we get the flavor of those. If you can move to the church pictures. We get the flavor of those, which is the flavor is messy disaster. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Uh, all right. So let us move on here. Uh, this is sort of what we get out of her. Like she sort of covers the you know, where the ammo was, where all of this was. Um, somebody's saying, don't skip Exhibit K. I'm not sure where hey, I've no. got Exhibit K in our timestamps here. No, there's a couple that are different. Okay, go ahead. Put those up. We're oh, this might be the prop trailer. Yeah, we can keep going a little bit here. Okay, what is this picture? This was a box that was located marked Live Ammo 1883. And, and again, that was what we talked about earlier. Yes. That's, okay. And what is what is this one? Uh, this is an overview of where that box was located. Okay. And and finally, what is what is this one? This is what was inside of that box. Okay. And there's uh, several in that uh, live ammo. There's several. So the live ammo from 1883, I think, is from Yellowstone, 1883. Right. That's the other movie that Seth Kenny was doing where they did some live ammo, uh, you know, training with the actors. And so, you know, live, live ammo 1883, what he's trying to suggest here is that, um, that basically this is live ammunition that somehow made it from that show over to, you know, over to the set of Rust eventually. Boxes here, correct? Yes. What is that? What, what were those that said lead? I don't recall. Okay, you don't recall what was inside those? Uh, no. Okay. They're labeled of various types. Did you go through all those? Yes. But you can't tell the jury today what, what was in them? I don't recall what was in them. I only collected 45 live rounds out of this box. Okay, and here's 45 LC. Is that right? Yes. What are those loose rounds around it? 
those were, I believe some of them were uh, live 45 rounds. So this is a mess? Collected? Yes. Okay. And how about these? This was a close up of what was in that box marked uh, 45 LC. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure that the, uh, when we saw like those boxes labeled 38 SPL, that'll be 38 special rounds. And when it says lead, I suspect that that means that they've got a lead, like a bare lead front to them. Um, unlike, you know, something that might be, you know, brass jacketed or something. And you know what is in this picture? Uh, this was a, a green ammunition box that was located. Okay. I'm pretty sure, like, Emily has better storage for her um, naughty children's books um, than <laughs> and for, like, you know, suggestive pickles than this has for, like, uh. And these appear to be more dummy rounds, is that right? Yes. 12-gauge dummies. Okay, if we can move to uh, K. Like just for props for the show, right? You've got better storage for for that than Is there they have going for. To be, uh, 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 some kind of demarcation so that we know which is J, which is K. I uh, guess, Your Honor. We need to go back and make sure that that's demarcated. Okay. We'll do that. Well, while um, we're finding that, I have a couple more questions. Now, I just want to note here, um, so uh, is how they have this stored legal or no? Uh, I don't think it's illegal where they are because certainly we, if it was, we'd expect them to be facing charges for the storage issues. Um, in Canada, this would be illegal. This would be, you know, I think that they would get some careless storage issues for this. The round you talked about in government or states 49 earlier that had um, ball bearings in it that didn't shake or, or apparently were stuck inside. Do you recall that? Yes. And that was the one that you sent off to the FBI lab? Yes. So that would have been a round potentially on set that didn't rattle. Yes. And that... So that would have been a round potentially on set that... Now, I'm wondering what she's saying there. That was... We don't know her name. We've been calling her Cleopatra. Um, you know, I will note she's dressed substantially down from what she was before. Um, and... But she's also, like... There's going to be some shenanigans later that... I'm wondering if this is like her telling him about the shenanigans going on. It did not rattle, correct? Yes. But um, you had to send that off to the FBI lab for confirmation to determine that, correct? Yes. And that's not... So the point he's making here is that you have to... You have to go and contact the FBI lab to tell that they're not dummies. The problem is, is that on a film set, you wouldn't be like... I'm sending this off to the FBI lab, you'd be saying, I don't know for certain that this is not a dummy and therefore I'm not putting it in a gun, right? You wouldn't put a, gu a, a cartridge into a gun if you didn't know for certain that it was fine. So, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Something either Miss Zachary or Miss Gutierrez Reed had the luxury of on the set, did they? No. Okay. Uh, we also heard um, yesterday Miss Morrissey shook a round into the microphone. You remember that? Yes. And asked everybody if they could hear it? Yes. Again, that's not something Miss Zachary or, or Miss Gutierrez Reed had the luxury of on set, did they? Of rattling around? Of having a microphone so they can rattle it and have everybody hear on a microphone. No. Sir, you don't need everyone to hear on a microphone. You just need you, the armorer, to hear the rattly bit. Like, the microphone is that everyone in court, because you've got 12 jurors. 
but you just do it by your freaking ear. You do it by your freaking ear. They didn't have a microphone that okay. I know. Okay, do you have the church pictures ready? Yeah. Can I, I hated that, that point. Um, can that you just quickly there. tell us kind of what hate. we're looking at here? Is this David Halls? I don't know who the individual in the back is. I was taking a photograph of the back of Mr. Uh, Baldwin. Is this uh, Mr. Halls? It's like... Well, it's some dude's back, so, um, cool. Okay, so earlier, did you tell me you didn't see Mr. Baldwin? This was the, uh, the only interaction I had with him was photographing what he was wearing and then taking the clothing that he had on. Okay, well, then you knew when you photographed him, he wasn't segregated in a car. Well, when I photographed him, he wasn't, I have no idea what he was doing before or after that. This is a good point here. Uh, would have been better to allude that the set was too loud to hear the rattling. I could tell you what I would do if I was an armorer and everybody was talking and I couldn't hear the rattling. And that would be, shut up, everybody. Um, this is life or death. Shut up. If I can't hear the rattling and I need to hear the rattling to know if I'm putting a safe round in, shut up. <laughs> like, shut up. Um, like, just... I'd be sitting there with an air horn being like, meer, meer, shut up. You know, I'm doing important stuff here. Well, well, right then he's standing outside. How long did you see him? Uh, my interaction with him was probably less than 10 minutes. Your Honor, she's indicated that she has no idea whether he was segregated or not, and we have plenty of other witnesses that can reasonably he, answer this question. Dummy should be bright pink. You, and, uh, and then they got they gotta look like yes, real cartridges, right? Thing. Um, okay. So this is basically him wrapping this up. Um, this, you know, this is sort of what the defense's argument here is, is you couldn't tell the difference between real ones versus not. Okay. Um, now I had, a mo you know, and then we've got a big mid-morning break, big old break. Um, and then they bring on uh, Christopher Zuck. Or is it Christopher? I thought it was Mr. Zook. Go ahead and state your full name for the record. Christopher Zook. There we Mr. go. Mr. Zook, how are you currently employed? I am currently retired. And I got a lot of retired people what did you, here. Where did you retire from? The Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office. And back on October 21st, 2021, how were you employed? I was a sergeant for the sheriff's office in the criminal investigations division. And in that capacity, did you become involved in the investigation regarding the shooting? Of now, I'm just going to note here. The only thing I have really recorded about this guy is what the F. Because this guy, um, he was required to unload a lever action rifle. And he doesn't know how to unload a lever action rifle. Um, he doesn't know how. So what he does instead of like unloading it properly is he works the action repeatedly. And I mean, this works. It's just also dumb. Um, and it's not super safe. So, um, and in the process of trying to do this, like this is like, you know, in the process of trying to unload the gun uh, in this fashion, he is he actually jams it because there is a, a, an improper cartridge. There's a cartridge in there that is the wrong size. And so he's trying to unload this thing by working the action, and it jams that up. And he's like, I don't know. Why is this guy here? This guy is here because one of the guns is jammed up and the prosecution has to tell us who jammed it up. His entire job in this trial is to be the guy who explains that he fucked up this particular step. And live your life in a way that you don't end up on the stand going, yeah, this important step in a nationally televised national interest trial, I fucked up. Um, 
I also want to say some of the people in the chat are are noting here. They're saying like, um, and somebody says, can I make myself bigger? I can make myself a little bigger. Um, there we go. I'm a little bigger. Um, somebody in the chat is like, it would be nice to retire this early, right? It seems like everybody here is retiring super young. So, yeah. And yeah, some lever actions can only be unloaded by cycling the action, but that's not the case with the one he had. So, this guy is basically just saying, hey, um, I screwed up the unloading. I'm the one who jammed it. Here's why it jammed. Moving on. Okay. Then we're going to move up to this extraction tech. Um, well, actually, no, we can we can briefly mention there's another guy who's super forgettable. Um, like super forgettable to a point where I basically just forgot he exists. Um, I got no notes on this guy. Why? Because he's super uninteresting. Hey, sir. Uh, my name is Ryan Litzinger. Ryan, I'm sorry. I thought it was Brian. I apologize. That's okay. Um, Mr. Litzinger, how are you currently employed? I am employed uh, as a videographer and editor with a production company in Albuquerque. And tell us about that production company in Albuquerque. What do you do? Um, so we. So this guy, it is clearly his first time testifying. You see him, he's sitting there and he's doing this. We. We. Yeah, he. That was really annoying to watch. He was just, you know, that was what he was doing. Um, this guy was also kind of funny because there were a few objections and a few places where the court was like, um, I have, you know, I want to talk to the lawyers here. And every time that happens, he, um, he thinks it's his fault. So when, when the lawyers get, you know, when there's, he doesn't seem to understand some of the yes. things where it's not his fault. Uh, did um, he seem to be in command of those scenes? Objection. Foundation. Judge, he said he saw it. Okay. Overruled. Okay. Well, the one that sticks out, he wouldn't have been in command because um, I think that it seemed that he was uh, on a horse and he was playing dead. So it wasn't really much of a... Okay. By the way, horses um, overall are more dangerous. On uh, like more actors have been injured, or like more people in films have been injured or killed, I think, by horses than have been injured or killed by firearms in Hollywood. Um, and horses is nothing compared to cars. Cars kill way more people. Like cars kill people all the time in the film industry. And, um, yeah, I, I see this, uh, the defense lawyer is totally robbed after he discovered donuts. I see people saying that they don't like this guy. I'm not going to make the size jokes here. Um, I, I mean, this guy does have some resemblance to Rob. I've been calling him wish.com Rob. Um, he actually does decent on cross. Like he's not a bad person cross-examiner. Uh, yes, I am clinking or messing with a plastic bag. I will stop that. And what, I, what I'm talking about more so is, you know, in insofar as the pace of filming mm -hmm. and things like that, that he seemed to have an influence on that. Council Sorry? Council approach, and he says, Sorry? It's not your fault, dude. Like, it's not you you're not the one who did anything wrong. Um, he just, you know, he doesn't understand the uh, the system on all of this. Um, there's other fun moments of this guy not knowing what's going when on. you looked at them? Yes. And are those the videos that you Yes, sent? I need a fidget yes. thing. And those specific 17 videos, what day did you film those videos? That was uh, October 13th, 21. 2021. Thank you. So what I would like to do at this point in time is I would like to 
move for the admission of all videos from production outfitters uh, that the court uh, deems relevant and admissible as we move through the trial. No objection. Will be of the 17. Minor of the 17, I think the defense does have some that oh, they okay. are intending to admit also. Sorry. Okay. So this uh, is kind of a joint foundation. Yes, yes, per stipulation, we'll do it this way, and um, I will so admit. Thank you. They're just, okay, thank they're you. just I admitting a block of videos here. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan, not so fast. <laughs> First time here, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for being with us, and I don't have any questions for you. So did you see that? <laughs> Sorry, Ryan, not so fast. Whoop. So she's done with him. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan, not so fast. <laughs> <laughs> this guy, it's his first time ever testifying. And so what happens as soon as the prosecution says, we're done with this guy, he's like, yay, I get to leave. Goodbye. And then he's told he's got to sit down. I love this guy. This guy is my favorite. Um, of all the witnesses so far, he's my favorite because this guy is adorable. He is absolutely nervous as hell. And you know, this guy is trying to be as honest as possible. This guy's got no dog in this. Like He doesn't care what happens. He doesn't anything. He's just... Um, He's just here, right? He's just, um, you know, he's just, uh, like, this guy's, I, I love this guy. He's, uh, this guy is fantastic. I kind of stand this dude. Um, so, I mean, his role in all of this is just kind of procedural, right? He's testifying about stuff that happened and whatever else. And I see, um. You know, shows their witness prep is awful, though. This guy isn't the guy you spend time prepping. Because literally all you're doing, like, really, they're just kind of laying the foundation for some video was taken and so forth. This guy doesn't need extensive prep. It's just get up there. Tell the truth. Um, I love this comment. Uh, he just wants to go back to the future. <laughs> I also love the uh, the name, Afuera the Chainsaw. That is cool. Um, so, uh, he's getting his 50 bucks for showing up. I don't know if he even gets 50 bucks. Um, it, it's probably just that he spends the day here and, um, and gets nothing. The usual amount you get paid for being a witness is F all. So, yeah, um, being a witness sucks. Next up is Jason Hawks. What is Jason Hawks here for? He's a cell phone expert. Can you call him more affirmatively? Now let me talk about police computer experts. 99 times out of 100... Their expertise is, I have been taught to use a program. Not, I am a computer science guy. Not, I could program anything. Not even, I could program a VCR. It's just, I have been taught to use programs like Cellbrite or NCASE or whatever else. They are often just, um, like, often, like, your 14-year-old kid could be a better expert than this. Uh, than these guys. But this is also where sh shit goes sideways. So sideways. So sideways. Um, yeah. Because um, the judge has some opinions. The judge has got some thoughts on stuff. And part of that is because of some effery. Do you swear or affirm under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay, have a seat. Talk into the mic. Thank you. This is also the opposite of... This is the opposite of the guy beforehand. The guy before was like, I've never testified before in my life. I don't know what, where, what I'm doing. I don't know how I got here. Um, 
this guy is I testify in court every couple of weeks. Um, I am more confident than my skill level actually allows. Um, I, um, I'm good at, you know, I'm good at operating one program, but, um, yeah. Uh, this guy's going to know exactly how testifying happens. Also, we're told that this guy's not going to take a lot of time. He takes Jason an hour. <laughs> how are you currently employed? Uh, I own a company that analyzes device extractions and cell phone records for attorneys. Lucky you. Uh, Mr. Hawks, can you give uh, the ladies and gentlemen of the jury some information about your uh, background and training? Uh, certainly. So I started in law enforcement in 2005 with the Alameda County Sheriff's Office. I remained there until 2017. He's not missing teeth, but he does need some dental seven work. Years but that's the irrelevant. Investigations. Uh, after leaving the Sheriff's Office, I went to the District Attorney's Office where I was an investigator for the DA. Um, I was there for three years and then I started this company uh, specific to device extractions. I've attended classes from Cellbrite, which is a company that extracts information from a handset. I've, uh, I'm a certified operator, certified physical analyst, and I've recently taken the um, advanced smartphone analysis. How did you become involved in this case? I was contacted by the prosecutor's office, I believe it was about a year ago, in March, late March, I believe, 23. She's trying to be and relatable. Were you asked to perform She's doing a, a mixed I was. job. Um, and let me back up for a second. Um, have you been, I apologize. Have you been qualified Yeah, those degrees are often like a weekend course. In, but... in cell phone records and device analysis? I have. And how many times have you been qualified as an expert in those areas? Uh, between records from the carrier and records from the handset, I've been qualified 53 times in five states. Um, I assume Smoke Jaguar 6 is in the military, because otherwise this comment gets way funnier. Um, yeah. Um, all right, so they're going to tell us that this guy is a super expert. Super expert. He's testified 53 times. He, um, you know, he knows what he's, what he's doing there. Um, all right. So let's, and somebody says, is that my dog? Yes, that's my dog. So, um, yeah. All right. Let us move on to, um, let us move on to uh, the next sort of discussion here. Um, so we're going to, eh, where's the right timestamp? Here we go. I hope this is the right place. That, that was Zora in the background. And is that a text to or from Ms. Gutierrez's phone? It is from her phone. And it is to the 505 number? Correct. And if, if you can, and, and what's what's the date? Uh, the date is October 20th, 2021 at 7.48 and 46 seconds uh, p.m. local time. Okay. And uh, can you read that for us? It says, headed down to get high out back, colon B. I'm going to show you the third page. Of Did I pass the critical before. part? Uh, where's the two? Two. Oh, or two here that's somewhere. Let me publish and roll. Two now. All right. In a thread between the um, 928 number I already referenced and a 505 number. Okay. Oh, I didn't pass it. And I just for context, what, what does that message say? Uh, that message says, time to eat now. How'd the blaze sess go? How'd the blaze sess go? Is there a and what time What time was that message sent? Um, by the way, uh, so that message was we can see all the phone numbers. by the phone at 8.24 and 46 seconds p.m. in red 
at 8.25 and 47 seconds. Don't call any of okay. these people, by the way. Uh, and so what you're... Chat, if you call any of these people, I, I know where you live. I will find you. Um, now, I just want you to see in this corner. It might be real hard to see. Source info. Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. Now, um, chat, I had to research this because... Why did I have to research this? Because... Emily D. Baker said, don't Google this. So I had to Google it. Um, this was originally a meme on online. And then somebody, a rapper, did a, a, like a rap video about Gorilla Grip Pussy. And how do I explain this? Um... This ties in to um, women doing a lot of Kegel exercises in order to promote um, their expertise and their skill and performance um, for sexual activity. So, um, that, that is a thing to name your phone. That is a thing to name your phone. Um, so I have learned way too much about this, but I mean, hey, um, I guess practice makes perfect. Um, so, um, yeah. Um, uh, thank you so much, Carson. Much appreciated. Um, but uh, yeah, so that that's what that's about. Now, we're going to hear later uh, some issues about the phone. The phone is going to... We're going to have some some moments about this. Um, so let's, um, let's move on to the next actually relevant part of this. 95 and ask permission to publish. No objection. All right, stage 95 is uh, admitted. You may publish it. I am, guys, chat, I got to show you something. Um, my fingernails right now are disgusting, by the way, so I'm going to apologize for that, but I still have to show you something. Um, so you see these two fingers, and you see how this finger has a very different fingernail profile from this finger, right? You see that? You see how this finger is all kind of messed up, kind of gnarly a little bit? Um... If you're wondering why this finger has kind of a gnarly end to it, it is because when I was a kid, my dad told me, don't touch the metal grinder while it's on. And so I touched the metal grinder. Now, to be fair, um, I waited until he switched it off. But not until the wheel, like the big, it's a big stone wheel. Um, I didn't wait until that was done spinning. I just reached out and touched it. So, um, because he told me not to touch it, I touched it. And that was a hospital trip. Uh, and my finger is never going to be the right shape because, yeah. So when Emily says, don't Google the thing... I'm, I'm Googling the thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um. And that message, is that from the 928 number? Correct. So any of the messages that are in green are from the 928 number. And from Hannah Reed to Dad Kulal or dadkula, exclamation mark. Um, hey, I need you to check out my boxes and send me pictures of our boxes of dummies. So, now this to me says she's concerned, like, hey, did somebody mess with my stuff? But, like, yeah. Any messages in blue are from an outside number. Okay. And can everybody read that? That way I don't have to have Mr. Hawks read it. 
Um, and then uh, I'm going to show you the second page, if everybody's had a moment to read that. I'll show you the second page. Um, and in the second page... It always does. What are we looking at here? Uh, so the, the top blue box is the response from the previous message that says, we'll do. Uh, and then beneath that is an image that was sent to her phone from the outside number. Pro tip, guys. If you are potentially implicated in a crime, the first thing you need to not do is start texting other people about investigating or covering up or messing with the crime. So... Now, one thing I will note is all of these phone numbers are now publicly posted. These were filed as unredacted exhibits. Um, that was dumb. And it gets dumber because they don't just post that for Daddy Dearest. Daddy Dearest, by the way, is a famous person. So now Daddy Dearest famous dude has his phone number published thank you guys so much uh we'll be at this every day until this is done so monday we'll be doing this tuesday uh, etc mr hawks let me back up for just a moment <clears throat> how do we know that three people were involved in this uh text conversation so the Cellbrite program will pull out text threads. So if, if um, you and I have a text thread and you and I and another person have a text thread, those are two separate threads in my phone. So what we're looking at here is a thread that was between these three people. Okay. Um, this is not a thread that was only between Ms. Gutierrez and Mr. Bowles. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Did you hear that, Mr. Bowles? Mr. Bowles is now in this. I'll show you the this. second page of State's Exhibit 96. And this is on, apparently, Elmo, this yeah. is called? Um, Elmo? Mr. Hawks, can you tell me what we're looking at here? Yeah, we're, we're looking at a continuation of that same text thread. So the top blue box is an incoming message from the contact from Mr. Bowles. Uh, the green box beneath that is an outgoing message to both because it's a group thread. Uh, and then the bottom blue box is an incoming message from the dad Kula contact. Okay, let's talk privilege because lots of people were talking about privilege issues and um, lots of people were talking about privilege issues. Um, lots of people talking about privilege issues and I understand Rob, you know, his stream is, uh, is going in about, I think 30 minutes. So, um, so let's talk privilege issues because people said, isn't this privileged? Well, there's two reasons why this is not privileged. Reason number one is in in consenting to allow for a search with no limitations of the phone, the judge has ruled that privilege has been waived with respect to all of the communications that they got that way. That is a huge thing. That's reason number one. Reason number two is there is a third party there. There is a third party involved. And once you bring a third party in, you blow up privilege. This, by the way, is something I always have to argue with about uh, with spouses and parents. Because what happens? Well, um, let's say that... Uh, let's say that a woman gets charged with, I don't know, punching a dude at a bar, right? And so she gets, you know, she gets charged. 
But her husband is still, like, her husband supports her. He's there. He wants to support her. He is, you know, which tends not to be the case if she was charged with, like, you know, um, prostitution, punching a dude at the at their house after they had sex, like, those kinds of things. So different circumstances result. But, you know, husband is there to support her. Husband wants to be in the room for the lawyer meetings, and I have to tell him to get the fuck out. And he doesn't like that. Husband never likes that. Um, husband never, never likes that. And it's still a difficult conversation. Uh, parents all the time are like, I want to be there when you talk to my kid. And I'm like, or I can do my job, which includes telling you to sit the fuck down in the lobby and wait until we're done. Because I don't want the parents to be able to be called as witnesses to what happened. Now, I'm just going to note here. I'm just going to note here that, um, you know, all of these phone numbers, at the time they came up, I assumed that these had to be old, stale phone numbers. Because otherwise, why wouldn't you insist that these be redacted and hidden? Um, and that's mostly on the defense, because that's it's their phone numbers, right? Um, that's mostly on the, on the defense. Um, so, um, you know, it's like you... Why did they put these phone numbers out there? Um, the judge is going to be super pissed um, because what ends up happening when you put this on court TV? Well, um, I know Emily said, don't call the numbers. And I know you people are not that crazy that you didn't phone the numbers. But I'm sure somebody on court TV said, I wonder... And called the number just to see, like, hey, can I just test it? I, I wonder if. Like, I wonder who's got Hannah's old number. And, of course, you know, it might be Hannah's got Hannah's old number. Um, it might be the Jason Bowles. And the other thing I want to note here is that as a defense lawyer, if you are, like, a defense lawyer with an active practice and so forth, it is your phone number is a valuable asset. Your phone number is is valuable um, because it's a phone number that people know to call when they get into trouble, right? Like, let's say I've just been arrested and I phone, um, I, I phone up the, uh, you know, I phone up the lawyer, the number for the lawyer I, I already have in my memory because some of your clients have your number memorized. Some of your clients don't know their wife's number but they have your number memorized. Uh, I've had clients like that. They don't know their wife's number. They know my number by heart. So um, somebody posted this online and judge had some opinions on that. The judge had some thoughts and that comes after lunch-ish. So... Um, where is it here? And all right, we're gonna and angry I'm judge absolutely bothered that someone went on court TV and then took pictures of the exhibits. So that's so you're not on court TV. Period. So that happens, you're out of here for the rest of the trial. All right, thank you. I am absolutely bothered is the understatement of the day. I am absolutely bothered. Judges can't speak freely. Judges are like they're on YouTube, right? And they got to avoid certain words. They got to avoid certain swearing filters. You know, you can't say C sucker, M F -er, you know, son of a B. Um, so she can't say any of that stuff. Um, so what she can say is, I am absolutely bothered, which makes her sound like Winnie the Pooh. 
you know, oh bother. <laughs> but, um, like, I'm absolutely, but here's the thing. She's pointing the finger at court TV. But you streamed this to the public. Like, this went out to the public. No, neither, neither side objected to it. Um, this is a public trial. And so, once it goes out to the public, the public is entitled to do whatever the hell they want with those phone numbers. The, the public was actually entitled to be dicks to a certain extent about that. Um... It's their fault for making it public. It's not the public's fault for, you know, once it's available, they've got a First Amendment right to put it out there. I have been extremely critical of court TV in the past. Um, I've been critical of court reporting. Uh, like, I will comment about how, how often court TV is zooming in on Hannah's face when Hannah ain't saying shit, right? She's not involved like she's not doing anything and they're zoomed in on hannah's face um it was really gross in the maya trial taking care of maya where it's like the lawyers up there making arguments and it's like let us get right into maya's freaking nostril um but here you know prosecution should have redacted the number and not had the witness read the freaking number the defense should also have said, whoa, 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 before you put that up on screen, can you take my number down off of it? Um, I mean, I've had, I've had proceedings where, um, you know, where my own, for my own legal issues and so forth, um, nothing spectacular, nothing criminal. I was fighting the government, but, um, where I was like, can you not put my address into the public record, please? Um, this should have been worked out like two weeks ago, like, hey, we have phone numbers. We are going to be dealing with a nationally televised trial. Maybe we don't want to put that in the public, in, you know, public eye. Like, you can just redact everything but the last, like, four numbers. Like, or, but the first three numbers. You can redact everything and put the, like, put a name over it and just agree that that's the number, right? Like, Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Um, so, uh, because of this, I had to make a bumper because this is pigeon business. So pigeon business, um, giving and chat, let me know what you think of the pigeon business bumper. Uh, because yeah, giving court TV shit over this is pigeon business. Um, the, um, yeah, this was frustrating. Um, all right. I'm going to roll the pigeon business again, just because I like it. <laughs> it makes me laugh. <laughs> All right, so, um, yeah, um, that is the, uh, that is the pigeon business. She, uh, is upset by that, and then afterwards they go for lunch. All right, let's call in the jury. Did we get everything straightened out? Counsel, I don't want to rush it, but did we, did we get that straightened out? Oh, it's out marked as lunch, time? but it's more of this guy. Um, what's the problem? So this guy really is getting in all the text messages. Um, and then there's some additional sort of fun stuff here. We bring in Elizabeth Walters. Under penalty of law that the testimony you'll give in this case will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. All right, have a seat, talk into the microphone. Thank you. What is she here for? She is here to talk about the prop truck. And she's here because after the shooting, one person wanted access to the prop truck one person guess who that was who wanted access to the prop truck yeah it's hannah go ahead and state your full name 
Uh, full name, Catherine Elizabeth Walters. Thank you. And do you go by Roe? Yes, ma'am. All righty. Roe. Uh, Ms. Walters, uh, were you a, a member of the crew of the movie Rust? Yes, ma'am. And uh, what role did you have? Uh, I was the unit production manager. What is a unit production manager? Did I misread that? The unit production manager several people? is the person on set who mm. is making sure the day-to-day we'll, we'll operations go smoothly. All right. Um, she said that just about anybody could have gotten in. Are you familiar with Ms. Gutierrez? I am. By the way, I've seen some people on Twitter and so forth being like critical about her appearance. I'm just going to say... We're not doing that here. Um, I don't care what she looks like. It's, you know, like, we're not doing that. She she does her job. She didn't need, like, she didn't want to have any obligation on this shit. Your role on set, if a crew member needs something, um, you would you maybe be the person? Yeah, you and if they had to? a primer, yes, then you'd still want to rattle um, them. If you couldn't tell visually, so you'd want to you, rattle them. Did Ms. Gutierrez ever specifically request from you additional training time with Mr. Baldwin? Not to me. Um, did Ms. Gutierrez request generally additional training days as an armor? Nothing's wrong with her appearance. Just people. No, some people me. on Twitter are shits. Um, That's did, it. Uh, We understand that there was a prop truck Row is a on badass. the movie set. Gonna, is that right? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. During the filming of the movie, before the incident that occurred on October 21st, uh, when filming wasn't going on, so in the evenings or on the weekends, how was that prop truck secured? Uh, there's a side door on that truck, and the back door, the back roll-up door, are secured by padlocks. And so that happened even prior to October 21st? Yes, ma'am. And who would lock the truck in the evening? We did skip the prosecution impeaching their own witness. Um, I didn't think it was super interesting. Um, maybe we could go back to it in another video. We're not going to get to it today. Um, we're not going to get to it today. So I really like her as a witness, by the by, because um, she is... She's one of the witnesses, if she has bad information to you, this witness is the worst thing that can happen to you. And the reason why she is the worst thing that hap that can happen to you is that she has come to this courtroom just to tell the truth. And she's got a little more confidence than that other guy, but she's just here to just tell her story and tell the truth. She doesn't care. Um, she doesn't care one way or the other. She's just here to be straight up honest. And this is the kind of witness that fucking sucks if you're the defense and if she's saying something bad for you because you can't do shit to a witness like this most of the time. Sometimes you can, like, you can get them and whatever else, but a lot of the time you just... And you just hope... That you can get something from this witness that is helpful to you, that's honest, because she's going to tell it like if she's not here to win for one side to win or the other. She's just going to tell you the truth and she's not going to defend anything. She's not going to justify. She's not going to me, 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 any of that. She's just going to, yeah. Um, padlock truck doesn't explain rifles stacked with boxes in a warehouse and the rest of the stuff OSHA reported. Yep. It's just this truck. Evening or, or for the I weekend. watched the cross. We'll um, get to the cross. Either it would be the department heads or... Because she testifies to one thing, then she testifies were, to the uh, other. So the we'll, we'll talk about that. And so were they combination locks or key locks? I believe they were key locks. I don't remember. They don't catch her to lie in the cross. They had just access, who had the keys. Clarify who things. Who could go get in the prop truck? Uh, it would be anyone... It would, it would be anyone who had the the keys to do it. Um, the department heads were the ones that usually had keys or the combinations. Who were the department heads? Can you just give us their names? Sure. Um, so for so she says anyone who has keys can get into it, and it's usually the department head, right? The prosecution is asking questions to get out the information they want. The defense is going to ask questions to get out the information they want, and she's just answering the questions she's being asked. Or. 
Um, for uh, props, it was Sarah Zachary. Uh, for Armory, and I believe that Sarah and Hannah shared keys. Um, the other department heads would have been uh, Sergey um, and a couple of others that I honestly don't recall, but they would have had keys to their trucks. And they have keys to the locks that lock the truck? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and did you have a key to the locks? No. Well, did Ms. Gutierrez uh, reach out to you a couple days after Ms. Hutchins' death and ask to meet you at the prop truck? Yes. And why did she want to meet you at the prop truck? Uh, she was getting ready to head back home and wanted to grab some personal effects. That's fair, but you're not a potential and jury member. They already were you picked you able them. to provide her <laughs> But I get what you're saying. Truck. Yes. I, I get you what you're saying that, you, uh, you know, so the members of the, the public who occurred, will see it differently are probably all right. the locks off the trucks. And I'm probably wrong. And uh, had a different set of keys so that the only people who would have access were my, Somebody asked uh, what kind myself. of whiskey am I drinking? And I am drinking. Captain, the only people who had those access. And, and why would Two the brewers, you do good stuff. have Call access me. to the truck? We should do a sponsorship. Um, because they were the ones <laughs> if they needed to move it for any reason, do any maintenance, any of those things. Okay. Uh, you, you have actual Teamsters that are working on the movie set that are maintaining the trucks. Yes, ma'am. And driving the trucks. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, so when Ms. Gutierrez, uh, do, do you recall the date that Ms. Gutierrez asked you to meet at the prop truck? I do not. Um, do you agree that it was just a couple days after the incident? I do. Okay. Um, and do you know everything that Ms. Gutierrez took out of the prop truck? I do not. Uh, did you see any of the items that she took out of the prop truck? I saw a few things, but I don't remember exactly everything. Uh, can you just describe to us the few things that you did see her take out of the prop truck? Uh, I remember uh, a couple of gun belts, and I think I remember a couple of cardboard boxes, but nothing other than that. Okay. And uh, Ms. Gutierrez took these items from the prop truck uh, prior to the police executing a search warrant on that truck. Is that correct? Yes. All right. Um, I will pass the witness. Thank you. So this is what prosecution wants. Ms. Gutierrez knew there's an investigation going on. She knew that the police, you know, the police hadn't been in there. She goes in, she starts messing with stuff that might be potential evidence and so forth. So that's a whole thing, right? Um, when can I get Pigeon Business merch? Right now. It is on my Zazzle store. Um, hopefully somebody can drop the link on to the Zazzle store because you can see um, there is Pigeon Business merch available right now. Cross your fan. Yes, thank you, Hunter. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, this is going to be, this is arguments, right? We, but the, <clears throat> you allowed other people. This is going to be the argument, but the prosecution is spinning a story and they're doing so with truthful answers to questions. The prosecution is asking specific questions to get the specific answers they want, and she is just answering the questions asked. Defense is going to ask some other questions and so forth. This is the other thing I also love. Um, you can, Zazzle lets you pick other products. I mean, I could turn that off, but why would I? So if you look at a Pigeon Business shirt and you say, I want a Pigeon Business mug instead, you can uh, you can make a pigeon business mug so um yeah all right let's uh let's keep rolling here uh, we'll get rob is getting ready for his stream as well didn't you? we're gonna go to his stream <clears throat> from the set soon. yes yes so after the incident the law enforcement cleared the scene mm -hmm. and everybody thought it was clear correct correct and so you allowed multiple people to get their personal effects. Is that correct? I might have to yes. make an official okay. mug. So it wasn't so just Ms. Gutierrez Reed. Correct. Okay. All right, I'm doing now, that right now. <clears throat> with regard to that set, I want to ask you, were you aware of the camera crew walking off? Yes. And they were disgruntled? Yes. When did they walk off that set? Uh, I received uh, resignation emails the night before. Okay. So this was the night before the incident, the night before the shooting, mm -hmm. and these camera crew, and how many of them walked off? Uh, my memory says six, which was the full team. So the full team, the full camera crew walked off set. So 
for the set next day, you have to get a new camera crew. You know how much her job sucked that day? You know how much her job sucked? So bad. Um, can you imagine you get told, like, uh, you get told, hey, um, sorry, last minute, um, everybody's, like, everybody quit. You gotta, uh, you gotta start up again. <clears throat> yes, sir. Okay, and how did you, were you in charge of that? Uh, it was, uh, a, a joint effort between, uh, myself, my line producer, Gabrielle Pickle, and, uh, our producers as well. Um, are you and Miss Pickle, do you talk, or on the set, did you talk quite a bit? Did you talk daily? Yes. Okay, so, and I don't want to get into hearsay comments what somebody else said but were you aware that miss gutierrez reed had um, requested additional training of mr baldwin for mr baldwin no okay you never had that discussion with her no but do you know whether miss pickle did i honestly don't remember okay so let's go back you and and a couple more people are trying to get the camera crew mm -hmm. is that right and did you get them for the next day we did okay you had to scramble I mean, that night? Is that make calls that night? Yeah, I was making calls that night and very early the next morning. Um, the camera crew that walked off because they were disgruntled, did they come to the set that next morning? They did. <clears throat> Do you know what they were doing the next morning? Did you watch them or did you see them? Yeah, uh, I was with them for part of the morning. They were retrieving their own personal effects off of the camera truck. Okay. Um, did you see uh, any of them walk around to other parts of set or... Or were they just getting their effects? From what I remember, they were just around the truck. Okay. Um, the prop truck, <clears throat> during the day, that was not secured during the days of set. Is that correct? Uh, as far as I know, it was not secured, no. Okay. So during the day that filming goes on, and what are the hours of that um, generally? Generally, we would start anywhere between 6 and 7 a.m. and go till 7 or 8 p.m. Okay, so for approximately that 12 or 13 hour period, whatever it would be, <clears throat> that prop truck was open. As, as far as I know, yes. Okay. Um, theoretically, everybody on set could have had access to that prop truck. Theoretically. Okay. Boom. This is, this is defense knowing how to deal with an honest witness, right? This is defense knowing how to deal with an honest witness and doing a good job. Um... Because she, like, she, he says, like, hey, um, the the prop truck was open all day, wasn't wasn't it? Yep. Okay, so anybody could have accessed this prop truck, right? Yeah, I guess. Um, I guess. Um, boom. Like, boom goes the dynamite on that one. Defense has accomplished a tremendous coup in changing because prosecution wanted this to be sorry the only person who could have accessed this prop truck or the only person who accessed this prop truck was hannah and therefore we know like hannah's covering shit up and whatever else prosecution has just um just flattened that it is um that was really good cross-examination that was really really good um that was really good um and this is what you do with with that right this is what you do so um so good all right i'm gonna take the speed up to one and a half Um, now, you said that it was you and the Teamsters that would secure that truck after hours. Is that right? Uh, it would be the department heads and the Teamsters. Department heads and Teamsters. Yeah. Who was the person, the Teamster in particular, that would do that? I do not remember his name. Okay. After the shooting, do you remember who that Teamster, who that captain, I think he said was? I would honestly have to go back through my notes. I cannot remember his name right now. Oh, that's all right. Yeah. And, and do you have <laughs> you just can't or? remember. That's, that's okay. Okay. So we, you don't remember his name? I do not. Okay. <laughs> um, did you check every night when, before you left to make sure that prop truck was locked? No. Okay. Um, you didn't check every night, now, no. With regard to Miss Gutierrez Reed, the thing is, is if she said she checked every night, that would probably be a lie, right? So, yeah. My understanding is that you never heard any complaints about her. I did not. Okay, and that was the entire time of the rest of it. Correct. Okay. Um, 
Let me ask you also, after the incident, after the shooting, I understand you went into the church to approximately two days after. That sounds correct, yes. Okay, and you were going to remove media? Yes. Is that right? Were yes. you trying to assist them to remove the uh, media from the camera to see if anything had been filmed? Yes, sir. Okay, and that was with regard to filming of the actual shooting, correct? Yes, sir. And were you able to remove that? I was. Um, were you able to determine whether there was any filming? Of the incident? Yes. There was no filming of the incident that was recorded. Okay. Do you know whether um, anybody may have had access to that camera after the shooting and before you removed the media? Not to my knowledge. Okay. When you said there was no filming, are you um, familiar enough with that camera system to know whether, if they're looking through the monitor, mm -hmm. that it has to be rolling? They can look through the monitor whether it's rolling or not. Okay. So your knowledge of that camera is they can look through it without it rolling? Correct. Okay. Um, That's an important question because they're trying now, to do, uh, they're trying to, to get um, um, that prop truck search, you know, that going. You so that it's search, an important right? question. And you um, also present for that search with Seth Kenny. Yes, he was there. Okay. And do you remember why Seth Kenny there? Did he go to provide the, the code? Uh, no, I think he was there because uh, a lot of the firearms that were there were his, so he was there to be uh, with the sheriff's office. Uh, he was there with the sheriff's office when they arrived? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you know whether he was uh, led into the prop truck? Do you recall that? I do not recall. Okay. Were you in the truck or outside when the search happened? Outside. Did you look inside the back of that truck? I did. Did you see that, that prop cart in the truck? I do not recall. Okay. Now, if it was in the pictures, would you have any idea why the prop cart was in the prop? I just want to know, you can see she's getting tired of this, right? She's getting tired of being cross-examined, and that's that's tough. All right, let's keep going here. We're sure. going to wrap. We're going to be a little late, but we're I'm not going to take you too far. Yeah, I'm sorry. Let me ask you this way. Um, if the prop cart was in the prop truck, uh -huh. do you know who must have moved that into the prop truck? I love that she says, I'm confused by the question. I love that. Don't answer a question you don't understand. Freaking thank you. Oh my God. I, I, when I do witness prep, one of the things I tell people is if you don't understand a question, you don't touch that question. Ask for clarification. You can ask for a clarification. You can say, I don't understand the question. Don't use it to dodge. But if you genuinely don't understand a question because it's a crappy question, then yeah. Um, I can make an assumption, but I do not know for sure yeah, who would have moved it. No, don't guess. Yeah. If you don't know, you don't know. No. Okay. All right. You indicated you got keys to the locks for the prop truck after the incident. Yes, sir. And you said the captain teamster had one too. Yes, sir. Okay. Did you have the combo to that, that gun safe? No. Okay. Now, did you, you talked a little bit about Baldwin and the safety training. Did you ever observe that uh, training that, that was done with Baldwin? I saw it from a distance, but I was not close enough to hear anything. Okay. Did you, where did you observe that Baldwin was not really paying attention? His back was to me and they were up a hill. I do not know. You, so you can, you don't know that. Okay. No, sir. On the, um, on the set, after it was over for the day, mm -hmm. you're aware that Ms. Gutierrez, Reed, Ms. Zachary, everybody had to basically clear out. They had to leave. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So at the end of the day, uh, it's fair to say they weren't accorded time to clean the prop truck because at the end of the day, they needed to go. Correct. And during the day, uh, Miss Zachary, because the set's pretty busy. Yeah. You that? During the day, they're doing their prop jobs and their uh, armor job duties, th those kind of things, correct? Correct. So there's no time really to go back during the day, take a break, and go back and clean everything. And there's not a night either, is there? Not that I know of, no. Okay. Okay, thank you, Honor. Redirect. Ms. Walters, I want to be clear. Between October 21st and October 27th, mm -hmm. Did anyone other than Ms. Gutierrez request to get items out of the prop truck? Not to me, not, not to my knowledge. It was only Ms. Gutierrez that you gave access to the prop truck for, between the 21st and the 27th? Yes, ma'am. All right. Um, and on the movie set... Um, She's going to try to patch this back together. I don't think she can stitch it back together. I think that uh, I think that the defense did huge damage to the point she was trying to make, and I don't think it's fixable. So um, let us... Let us go and deal with one last thing. Um, one last thing. And then we're going to read out Super Chats. I'm going to answer Super Chat questions. And then I am going to kick you to Rob. So, um... I don't know if you think it's your lucky day, but we're going to break early. I think from the faces I see, it's, it's a good thing. Okay. All right, but we have one question that we're going to ask you to go back in to your room and answer this question and um, and then come back out and get dismissed and we give you all the, you know, don't forget language. Okay. 
it'll come clear to you. You're all going to go out. He's going to ask you that question. He's going to get your answer, and then he's going to give me the answer on that piece of paper, and then you all are going to come back in. Okay? All right. All rise. So they had a sidebar, and then, uh, oh yes, um, yeah, I did, I did miss this, and she should have got this out on direct because the uh, the other side could have objected. There were accidental shootings on set, um, but I want to cover this quickly because I'm Rob's going to be starting soon, and I kind of want to, I don't want to trample over that. So this, there's a question for the jury, and we don't know what this question is. What is the question? What's in the box? Um, they had a sidebar, and then they, um, you know, and then they had that. Uh, Becca Lynn says it was pyrotechnics. They had some accidental discharges that weren't pyrotechnics. So something here that they think is going on. Oh, this is interesting. Someone that was in court earlier said that a juror passed a note. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, somebody might be getting kicked out as that. Uh, real life dinosaur. She was only paid as armor for eight days. That email was 11 days before the shooting. She was not the armor, except she was doing the armor job. So, yeah. Annabelle Feinstein, I saw that. I My address is in my About page on my YouTube channel. So um, you can grab it there. That is a fantastic offer. Um, let's let's talk. I'll send you an email. We'll, we'll chat because that is that's a really awesome offer. So thank you. So then it cuts to this. They... They were having a little, like, smiley, chatty moment there. Um, these two are able to have a conversation. They don't look like... I just want you to see this. Like, I'm just going to back this up a little bit, and I'm going to put it at one and a half. We don't get any audio here. Just this... Just watch their demeanor. Like, she's talking to him. He's, you know, he's like chill. He's got a little smile on his face. I think they're, I think they're just being, I thought, like, I thought they'd be hating each other, that they'd be throwing down. Good for bulls. Good for, you know, good for all of them. Um, good for them. Because, um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not how uh, crew pay works. Getting paid as armor for eight days does not mean the first eight days. To any armor, it would mean the eight days they want to film with guns over the full filming schedule. Yep. So. All right. So this whole business of like, what is going on with this, um, you know, with these jurors. Uh, <laughs> we see Hannah lowering her head there. This thing of like, something is going on with the jurors. This is not just pigeon business. It is. I had to make an extreme pigeon business thing. I'm not sure I'm super happy with the extreme pigeon business, but um, it's extreme pigeon business. <laughs> uh, I want to know what's going on with the jurors. I want to know what is happening here. Uh, we get a little bit of a, a hint. Um, <laughs> extreme pigeon business. I might have to make an extreme Lady pigeon Patricia business Lee shirt. And Haven and I are, you know, shooting the breeze um, that it was being picked up on court TV. So, you know, people knew that I walked my dogs when I got home. You know things like that and and um so we just want to make sure we were all kind of squirmish on which which things trigger us going on court tv so that's why we went in the hallway it was we didn't mean to be secretive we just wanted to take a breather on feeling you know a little you know uh, she doesn't want to be picked up on that's on fine. that okay so i do, we wanted to share that because we didn't want to leave that impression okay so um, they're supposed to write it down here. 
but you can tell me. So do I need everyone to individually write No, I mean just, what's the answer? I like the idea that the pigeon should be skateboarding. Maybe I'll contact the artist and be like, can I get a pigeon on a skateboard version? Um, I like Emily's notion that she should... Um, Emily had the notion that she should do consulting for this. Um, that's a great notion. I, I like that. That is that is fantastic. I would steal that idea. I would totally steal that idea, except that um, I can't go to the U.S. to do work. So I can't steal that idea as easily. All right, let's uh, cover Super Chats quickly, and then we will jump to Rob. Alexandra Silvera, thank you so much for the new membership. Much appreciated. Vez from Quebec, 255000 Woohoo. Woo-hoo. Um, it's been a wild ride. Um, I I never thought I'd hit 5,000, let alone 255. So um, it, it's been a ride. Um, and I don't know, maybe we'll hit 256. If you guys haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Um, I know Emily says, hey, we're on our way to a million, and she absolutely is. Um, I wouldn't mind following her one day, so... You know, long way away, but you gotta send. Uh, you gotta send. Set some goals. So, um, gotta set some goals on that. So, uh, and I see people saying, "Yes, we need pigeon on a skateboard." Uh, just because ten gifted memberships. Thank you so much, uh, Marisma. Happy Bing. Love to my elven friend. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, uh, Megan Brogdon. Between you and EDB, coverage of this is awesome. I. EDB catches some things I miss because she's got the experience as a prosecutor. And that is, you know, that's kind of a, um, that's an experience I don't have, right? I've only been defense counsel and I know guns. Um, that said, um, you know, I know the guns a bit better than she does sometimes. Uh, so, yeah. I agree with this 100%. We need a Rob EDB Runkle meetup. I would love to set up like some sort of thing. I one of these days I got to go visit uh visit EDB. We got to do all that. Aaron Olivia chip in for better Runkle boosters. Thank you so much. Uh I've got that set up, I think. Baby Gator, thank you for 10 gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Uh Dave Inspiration, nice bear defense 12 gauge round. I think it's made for the bears that walk on two legs, silly Canadians. Um Sort of. They also make like um they also make a version of this that is designed to be really good at like going through trees. So I don't know. It might be. Um twelve gauge is a slug like a twelve gauge slug is a lot for a person. So Kate, thank you for uh, the YouTube membership. Much appreciated. Against the tide, make sure to like, please share as well. Against the tide, you're a mod, you don't have to super chat. It's uh so yeah. Um Yes, I am. I I am totally in on that. Um, so, uh, James C., thank you for the YouTube membership. Much appreciated. Uh, Carolyn J. Rubin, you're still running on the assumption that Hannah actually had any authority. If people weren't listening to her, if they were not going with uh, respect ma authorita, then her job is to pack up all the guns and leave. Um, that's her job. So, um, yeah. Uh, Kelsey Nicole, this is so helpful. I'm glad to be helpful. Um, I think that was with regards to the, uh, the video that I played earlier. So that's what it was for. So thank you. Marvin CZ, thank you for the 10 gifted memberships. Uh, Morgan 908, I had horses and have guns. Number of times my guns have hurt me beyond a shallow cut to the hand. Zero. Um, everybody gets slide bite sometime. <laughs> um, slide bite, by the way, is when you have a semi-auto, like a handgun, this slide reciprocates and if your hand is too high it'll it can tag you you can you can get cut that way um horses made me 100 percent disabled for over 10 years the only part of that that i like is the over 10 years which makes it sound like it's done i hope that's the case so i hope you've recovered um karenoth i'm just here so i won't get fined <laughs> i love it um, Chelsea, thank you for the five gifted memberships. Much appreciated. Carson Pratt, won't be around much while you're live, but want to make sure to get a uh, super chat sent to you before you're finished. Thank you so much. Uh, Wendy Wilkinson, thank you for the membership. Uh, same with Carol's Dark Sarcasm. I love the name. That is fantastic. Aaron, let's talk pigeons. Uh, I really like the, I like the pigeons. Food.
That just makes me smile. I'll probably get tired of it, but I like it for now. Uh, Kristen M96, FYI, EDB reposted on X, a reporter asking, oh, I can't say X sounds like porn. Um, it's Twitter. A reporter asking Morrissey about the phone numbers. She blamed defense. Uh, they should have asked if they wanted privacy. Uh, she's kind of not wrong. Um, she should still have redacted it as well. DSN, thank you for the gifted membership. Much appreciated. Uh, Matthew Felty, has there been any testimony on the media reported uh, Range Fun Day and other incidents uh, prior to the church scene day? The Range Fun Day is probably a myth. Uh, I don't think there's any evidence on that one. Uh, Ann Bell Feinstein, we'll be in touch. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Canonical Heat, thank you for 20 gifted memberships. Super generous. Thank you so much. Canonical Heat, well-deserved, and onward to 275k next. That is my end-of-year goal. Um, we will see. Um, maybe maybe I reach it. Maybe I surpass it. We'll see. Disorder, thank you for the YouTube membership. Much appreciated. All right. Um, thank you, guys. Please like this video. Share it uh, with your friends. Subscribe to see more of these. Hit the notification bell. YouTube is not always the best at notifying, but it is so far your best chance of all of that. Um, all right, I'm going to send you over to Rob and, um, we all have a job to do there. Um, you know what it is. I'm not going to spell it out in case Rob is listening, but you know what it is. And, um, so we'll, we'll head there. I'm going to take a few minutes myself while I get, um, I'm just going to like grab another Coke. I'm going to go for a little walk. I might walk around the block just to sort of wind down a little bit. I'm going to be doing this again on Monday. I normally do a Monday fun day thing. Um, I think we're going to replace that with a recap. And, you know, but I might I might discuss some other stuff there. So, um, all right. Thank you guys so much. Um, we've got one last Morgan 908. I'm working it again at least. Thank you for the concern. I, I worry. I, I worry. And Paula, welcome aboard. Thank you for the new membership. All right. Let us um, let us hit the uh, the wind up and uh, wrap things up. All right, where is that button? Mm -hmm.